Hi, and welcome to The Palette, a podcast about language learning and teacher training by IH London. My name's Becky, and today I'm speaking with Delta trainer Nick Witherick for our final instalment of our Delta series of podcasts. And perhaps our most important instalment, because today we are talking about life after the Delta. So if you're interested in learning about what your options are after you finish this qualification, this is the episode for you. So, Nick, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, Becky. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I'm going to get straight into my questions. So first of all, can you just give us an overview of the various options you have once you've completed your Delta? Yes, so once you have all three modules, you are fully Delta qualified um, and there are a number of potential directions you can go in. Uh, You can go into academic management and become a director of studies or take on a senior teacher role. Um, You can go into teacher training and, for example, become a CELTA trainer and maybe one day even a Delta trainer. Um, There are options with publishing and producing ELT materials. Uh, Maybe you're more interested in testing and assessment, so you can work for an examination board or as an examiner. But more generally, the Delta will open doors so that you can find a better job, a more interesting job, a job in a teaching context that suits you better. And ultimately, of course, you should get paid a bit more. Fantastic. Very important. So there's loads and loads of options there. Um, We'll break them down and look at each a bit closer. So first of all, can you tell us a bit more about academic management and becoming a director of studies? Yeah, I mean, this depends on the place where you work. So in smaller schools, there is unlikely to be um, an assistant director of studies or an ADOS. They just have a director of studies or a DOS. But in large schools, they will have both. In many cases, it's about getting experience as an ADOS first before applying for DOS jobs or getting experience in some kind of coordinating role, for example, as a summer school coordinator, where you organise and help run the summer school programmes that typically a lot of schools in the UK have in the summer. Um, So there is seasonal demand for Delta qualified staff for these temporary management roles. And this can be one way to get into management or at least get some initial experience. Um, As I mentioned in the Module 3 podcast, um, having a younger learner's Module 3 specialism would stand you in good stead when applying for these kind of jobs, as typically summer schools are for younger learners and team learners. Um, we've We've also talked about in the last podcast the ELTM option which, because of its focus on English language teaching management, um, can help you when you start a DOS or an ADOS job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can understand that the Delta can help you actually get the job, but does it help on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, in many ways. So as an academic management, um, you have to observe staff, give them feedback. You have to do inset or teach development sessions. You have to select material, design curricula, And the Delta can help you with all these things. Okay, fantastic. So what about uh, teacher training then? Yeah, to be honest, um, it's something which a lot of Delta course participants ask about. How can they become a CELTA trainer? Um, So one of the great things about being a CELTA trainer is that if you want to be freelance, you can travel to wherever a CELTA course is being run in the world. But also, um, since the pandemic, there is a lot of online CELTA training going on too, so you can stay at home. But the starting point is you need to find a CELTA centre that wants to train you up. In many cases, this means working there first and waiting for an opportunity. For example, um, one of the CELTA trainers leaves and the school wants to replace them with an internal appointment. Um, All the centre is growing and they're running more courses. So yeah, you express an interest and hopefully get the job. Then it's a case of generally shadowing a CELTA course for a month if it's a four week course and being observed by the Cambridge assessor doing input and feedback, etc. However, it's worth saying that a lot of Delta qualified teachers want to be CELTA trainers. So in some institutions, you may have to wait a while. Um, But it's also worth saying that I have over the years seen job advertisements in which the school is recruiting Delta qualified teachers and they are promising to train them up to be CELTA trainers as well. Okay, right. And you're a CELTA trainer too, is that right? Yes, I am. Yes, it's a nice contrast to Delta training. Um, And also in terms of the day-to-day working life of a teacher, it provides a balance. 
So for me, it's nice to do both. So Celta training, Delta training, and also teaching. Plus, if you're telling people how to teach, you probably should be spending some time in the classroom teaching actual learners. Mm, absolutely. So how long before you can become a Delta trainer? Um, Cambridge rec recommend around five years of CELTA training experience before being trained up on the Delta, but there is some flexibility in this regard. Um, some trainers take a different route and go straight into Delta training from a different role, for example, being a senior teacher or academic manager. Um, becoming a distance Delta local tutor for module two also gives you useful experience can help with this. Okay, fantastic. And going back to all our various options, you also mentioned publishing. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is a potential career path for those who want to move away from the classroom, but also exploit all their teaching knowledge and experience. Um, it's obviously possible to, to do this as a sideline as well, but English language teaching publishing is, as you can imagine, big business. So you've got publishers such as Pearson, Cambridge, etc. These are big companies with various operations, but they're also small publishers as well. So if you're interested in materials writing, this is something which is mainly done freelance, but there are plenty of in-house positions within these companies related to things like commissioning content, um, as well as in some cases, content creation, but certainly the editing and development of material. Um, yeah, you may not need a Delta qualification for all positions, but for anything senior, it's highly likely. Okay. And Cambridge aren't just about publishing, are they? There's a whole sort of assessment side to what they do. Yes, a lot of larger organisations involved in publishing also do examinations and Cambridge is no exception to this. Again, if you wanted to move away from the classroom, there are options working for exam boards and assessment departments. Um, roles can relate to exam development, so designing, revising, adjusting tests. Um, there's also quality control and accreditation aspects as well. Um, sometimes there's content creation, refining and editing content, but it's not just about working for the examination board behind the scenes, as it were. Um, there are also options as examiners. Um, for example, certain exams you don't need to be Delta qualified. Um, for example, Cambridge, but you do for Trinity College London exams and also for certain positions in the IELTS exam structure. Um, so in many cases, being an examiner is something teachers do part time to supplement their income, but it can also be more of a full time occupation, too. Um, again, it's just another available option. Mm, absolutely. So you mentioned at the start um, the idea of a more interesting job in a context that suits you. Uh, could you just explain a little bit more? What kind of contexts were you referring to? Yeah, it can be higher education, further education, public or private sector. However, this may um, just be a greater variety in your role in the school or the classes you teach. Um, so, for example, Delta trained teachers are often the ones trusted with things like advanced classes or exam classes. Um, or you may have the opportunity to mentor newer teachers. In terms of higher education, most positions these days require the Delta. It's not for everyone, but I know so many people who love working for universities and teaching EAP, so English for academic purposes. Um, this may be focused on certain types of course, anything from fashion and art, engineering, medicine. Um, but a fairly typical route into this is by doing pre-sessional courses, usually over the summer. Uh, these are courses for students who are about to start their undergraduate degree and need, an addi need additional language support for academic research and writing. Um, although this work is seasonal, there are full-time positions and it's also quite well paid. Okay, wow, well, that's really interesting route. Um, so aside from all these fantastic career path options, what more personal things do you get out of the Delta? Yes, first, I think a huge sense of achievement. It's not an easy qualification to get um, and requires a lot of time, money and commitment. And employers know this. Around 12,000 people a year do a CELTA course, but Delta candidates are in the hundreds. Um, and that says something about you. And that's why increasingly employers want Delta qualified staff. Um, in terms of other less tangible benefits, as I mentioned before, with the Delta, things fall into place. You understand why you're doing certain things in the classroom, 
or if you're a DOS or an ADOS um, or a teacher trainer, you can articulate why doing certain things is a good idea or not. Um, and if nothing else, this builds confidence. You become a more confident teacher with more in-depth knowledge, with more practical teaching ideas, and the personal satisfaction that comes with being a better professional. Um, you've got more work options. The work you can do be more varied. This can help motivate you as you can see your career progressing. I think as teachers, we do this job primarily um, because we want to help people. Um, and by doing the Delta, you want to undoubtedly be much, much better at doing this. Wow, fantastic. I mean, a wealth of things to be gained then from studying the Delta personal, career-wise, in so many different ways. Uh, well, that was all of my questions, Nick. And that concludes our Delta series of podcasts. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, if you haven't heard our focus on uh, module one, module two, module three, the orientation course, go back and listen to those episodes. They're all on our Spotify and our YouTube. And Nick, just a massive thank you for being on the podcast. My pleasure, Becky. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.